Welcome to a video on differentiating and integrating with power series. By now we should all be fairly familiar with the most common power series as we see listed here. And we can use these power series to approximate the derivatives and antiderivatives of a variety of functions. For example, we can use power series to approximate the derivative of f of x equals sine x. Now of course we know the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x, but let's go ahead and approximate this derivative using power series. There's a couple ways of doing this. We can either differentiate this summation here, or we can differentiate the right side by differentiating these individual terms. Let's start by finding the derivatives of the first several terms of the expansion of the power series. So we'll find the derivative of x minus x cubed divided by three factorial plus x to the fifth divided by five factorial minus x to the seventh divided by seven factorial and so on. And these derivatives should give us the first several terms of the power series for cosine x. So this would be one minus three x squared divided by three factorial plus five x to the fourth divided by five factorial minus seven x to the sixth divided by seven factorial and so on. Let's go ahead and simplify these terms. The three and the three factorial would simplify to two factorial. So we'd have minus x squared over two factorial plus the five and the five factorial would simplify we'd have a denominator of four factorial. And again, the seven and the seven factorial simplify like so. This should be the first several terms of the power series for cosine x. Before we go and take a look at this, let's go ahead and find the derivative of this summation with respects to x. So the negative one to the power of n will not be affected by finding the derivative. Now to find the derivative of this term with respects to x, we would have two n plus one times x to the two n plus one minus one, or x to the two n. And we still have a denominator of two n plus one factorial. But remember that would be two n plus one times two n factorial. And so we can simplify a factor of two n plus one. So the derivative would be the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x to the two n divided by two n factorial. Now let's go ahead and go back to our formulas and verify that both of these would be the power series for a cosine x. Well, here's cosine x. And this does match the derivative that we found using the terms of the power series for sine x. And the formula here for the summation is the derivative of the power series for sine x as we see here. Now let's take a look at how we can use power series to integrate. We want to integrate sine x divided by x with respects to x on the interval from zero to 0 0.5. Now because of this integrand, we don't have a nice way to integrate this. We can use power series to approximate this definite integral. This would be equal to the integral from zero to 0 0.5 of the power series for sine x divided by x. Well here's the power series for sine x. But we want to divide this by x, which is the same as multiplying by one over x. So we'll have a factor of x here. Let's go ahead and simplify this and then we can integrate. Well here we have two n plus one factors of x and here we have one factor of x. So we can simplify this to just x to the power of two n. Now what we're going to do is find the first several terms of this power series. But when we start to evaluate this, 
we'll keep finding terms until we find the term that is less than 0 0.001. So when n is equal to 0, we're going to have 1. When n is equal to 1, we're going to have minus, this will be x to the second, divided by 3 factorial. When n is 2, we'll have plus x to the fourth, divided by 5 factorial, minus, and so on. I, th I think we have enough terms now. Let's go ahead and find the antiderivative, and then evaluate it at the upper and lower limits of integration. So the antiderivative of 1 with respect to x would be x. Here we'd have minus x to the third divided by 3 times 3 factorial plus this would be x to the fifth divided by 5 times 5 factorial and so on. So go ahead and evaluate this at 0 0.5 and then also at 0. So when x is 0 0.5 we'll have 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 to the third divided by 3 times 3 factorial plus 0 0.5 to the fifth divided by 5 times 5 factorial and so on. And then when x is equal to 0, these will all be 0. And since we want to approximate this with an error that's less than 0 0.001, as soon as we find the term that's less than this, we have found the approximation that we're looking for. So this is 0 0.5. minus, let's see what the value of this fraction would be. 0.5 cubed divided by 3, and 3 factorial would be 6. So we have approximately 0 0.0069. And if this fraction here is less than 0 0.001, this value here will be our approximation. Let's go ahead and check it. Divided by 5 times 5 factorial. And this number here is less than 0 0.001, and therefore our approximation will be this difference here. So our approximation is approximately 0.493. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching.